So for this problem on 14.42, um, so I've just copied and pasted a few um, bit of the material. And so the question is obviously right here. And really the key thing is this information here telling us that it's a first order reaction. That means that you would be using uh, these two equations for any kind of first order reaction. And that's what you see in parts A and B. So uh, also in the information, we are given the rate constant. That's the K value, okay? And notice that in the first one here, we are asked for the half-life, that's this. So you would just set up this equation to look like so, 271 per second. And that's your plug and chug answer for for part a um and then that answer isn't used for part b by the way for part b if you look at the information that's given um well let's just look at that what you have to recognize is that like the information that are that's 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 in the problem talking about a certain amount of the iodine that you're starting with that's the um what we say is the uh, naught or zero, uh, the initial amount of the um, iodine. You can think of the zero as time equals zero seconds, so before any reaction takes place. And then time is now, you know, we want to know, you know, not what's happening at zero seconds, we want to know what's happening at 5.12 seconds. Um, and what we want to know is the amount of the iodine that's left over at uh, 5.12 seconds. So just to sort of highlight a few things, because um, we're going to be using this equation here. Okay, so there's the time. And the initial amount here, that is this value. So instead of obviously, you know, instead of, um, instead of A here, you're talking about um, iodine, right? substitute whatever chemical that you're asked for in a particular problem there. And then finally, you know, the thing we want to calculate, in this case, the concentration of iodine at 5.12 seconds, that is this parameter there. And so what you're looking at is something that, I mean, you're going to, um, plug and chug into this portion of the formula. And what's going to happen is that once you do that, to some time t, you're going to get, that'll just be a number. Right? I mean, you can, you can evaluate this entire expression now, and it's just going to be a number. And then remember, the way that we get rid of that natural log is to take the exponent of both sides. So this would then, right, if you take the exponent of a natural log, you just cancel out the natural log, and you're left with that parameter that's within the natural log expression, and then the exponent of that number, and that should give you the answer there. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks.